Welcome to Farm Charm Chic. I'm Emily. In today's episode, I have some beautiful beachy DIYs that I have made using items from my stash. This is part of a collaboration. I'll explain a little bit more about that as we get into the video. If you like crafting, DIYs, dupes, hacks, thrift flips, or just creating in general, I would love if you would consider subscribing and becoming my crafting BFF. If you do like any of the projects you see in today's video, remember to hit that thumbs up, but let's go make some DIYs. I like to keep glass jars and vases in my stash. They're really easy to find at the thrift store or you can pick them up at your craft store. I like to grab them when they go on sale for really cheap because I feel like you can always find uses for them. Now I just used my heat tool to get off the sticker. There was a little bit of residue. So I'm just using some water and just moving that around with my finger to make sure that gets all broken up and then just wipe it clear with a paper towel. And you can see there's no residue left at all. Now I have this rope in my stash. This just came from Dollar Tree. I think if you had like some nautical rope to use with it as well, anything like that would work. Even twine would work and get the job done. But I'm just going to use this and I put a little bit of hot glue on the ends and I just twisted it there when the glue wasn't so hot so that way I wasn't going to have a problem with any fraying on the rope. Now I'm just picking a starting point here. I'm using some hot glue to adhere that to the glass jar. And I'm just gonna be going around in a circular motion with my piece of rope, just making sure that every like inch or so I put a little dot of hot glue. And you just repeat this process all the way around. It's super simple. You do wanna make sure that you're not using so much hot glue that you have a problem with it spilling out or seeping out of the rope or anything, because you wanna keep it as clean as possible. If you had like one of those small nosed glue guns, uh, that would be a perfect thing to use on this project here. Unfortunately. Unfortunately, I just, I have my trusty old glue gun I've had forever and I love it and it works. So if it's not broke, don't fix it, right? <laughs> so I'm just, as you see here, going around here, just being very careful. I do put the glue on the rope, a little dot, not on the glass. I just wanted to keep it, like I said, as clean as possible. And it's just so simple to do this. This project took maybe 10 or 15 minutes to do from start to finish. If you have one long piece of rope to use, I would suggest doing that so you don't have to go back in with another piece. I just was using a scrap piece and I didn't know exactly how far that would get me. So that's what I started with. And you can see I even ended up bringing out another bundle there because I wasn't sure how far up I wanted to go on the vase. It's just a matter of personal preference when you're doing something like this, what you think looks good. And you can see here, I am just putting those two ends together to try to make it as seamless as possible. Obviously, when I display this, that area is going to go in my back. I did where I started the rope at the very bottom and I ended this layer. I wanted to make sure that those seams were both on the same side. So they, that way, if I did put this towards like a wall, you would not be able to see that at all. Honestly, it's very seamless though. And so I feel like unless you look really closely, you can't tell. But the same process here, just going around a little bit of glue and then I will go place that rope down. You can see here, I'm putting a little bit more there and I just come in and I just tap that rope down and I, I move that rope towards the glass so any hot glue will go towards the glass, not out between your seams. And then any excess there, I was just kind of picking off. So as you guys can see, this is easy peasy, really simple. Here's just a close up look at exactly what that looks like. I don't do an actual like a string or bead of glue, it's just little teeny dots that I will do. And then I will push that rope in towards my vase. After I get the desired amount of layers there that I want, I'm just putting a little bit of hot glue on the end there to seal that so I don't have fraying. I do taper it off at a little bit of an angle. I have measured this so where this seam stops here, it's in line with all of the other areas that I have started new rope lines. So that way, again, they're all on that same side. So when it's placed against a wall, you would not even be able to see those. Again, you have to look pretty close to be able to see it there. And just using some glue, I'm just gonna hold that down until it completely dries and there we have it I decide to take a little bit of one of these aim of flames and go over to kind of get any of those little hairs or anything like that that comes up from the rope I really like the finish this gives the rope of course just be careful do this outside have water close by just be very smart when you're using an open flame like this this is completely optional but look at how beautiful this is I think it turns out so elegant so neutral and simple I think it is the perfect beachy item you could even put like a little seashell on the front if you wanted to completely go that nautical 
vertical look or just leave it more plain and that way it matches all decor types. What do you guys think of this? Do you like how it turned out? Today's video is part of a collaboration that is hosted by Liana DIY. Our guest host today is Crafts with Ash DIY and Decor, and I am also joined by the Rusted Willow. I am so excited to be joining these ladies with for a Craft Your Stash playlist. Down in my description box is going to be a link to the playlist. It will also be pinned in my comments so you can easily find it. These are such talented ladies, and we all had to find items in our stash to craft with. Last year, I bought a bunch of nautical items I was going to use and I never got around to making another nautical video so I am using all of my nautical pieces to try and make a beachy themed video here with all of my stash items so hopefully I can achieve that but you guys click that link down in my description box or comments and see what these other ladies did with their stash I'm sure they're all going to be absolutely beautiful let's get right back into the DIYs so this is kind of a two for DIY. I have these two that I'm going to do that achieve a very similar look. I have had both of these in my stash for a while waiting for the perfect projects and I feel like this it was time to use these. This I did pick up last year at Hobby Lobby in their clearance. It came from their kind of beachy section and I mean I did love the sign but it was kind of beat up and so I do want to give it a new coat of paint. This came from a thrift store and I loved the shiplap wood look to it and I thought it would be perfect. And then you can also use something like this from Dollar Tree. And then I'm just going to use those cute little anchor and that little starfish that you saw and we're going to make this really cute. Now I'm taking my fingernail file and my emery board and just um, filing this down to smooth it out so I can paint it. And I'm going to put a link to those emery boards because they've been on sale at, as of the recording of this video anyways for 50% off and they are the best emery boards whether it be for your nails or for your crafting. You guys, this is just vintage duck egg from Dixie Belle. It's like my new favorite color right now. I really love kind of the grayish, bluish, greenish tones that it has, but it was a little dark for what I wanted. And so I'm just gonna take some white wax here. And I really wanted this to kind of have a more weathered look to it. And I thought this would be uh, a really great way to achieve that. I love how it does come out. I'm just painting it on and you can paint it on with a brush, with a sponge, however you wanna do this with a baby wipe and I just get it all over because it's going to kind of fall into any of the um, crevices that were left from the chalk paint uh, or your brush ridges or anything and then I'm just going to wipe that off here uh, either with I think I'm just using a paper towel here rather than a baby wipe because I did want to make sure that a decent amount stayed on I feel like when you're using a baby wipe you have a little bit more moisture so it does wipe a little bit more off so that's kind of a matter of personal preference but I'm just showing you a different type of technique here in case you want to give this a try. So I do this all over the frame. I really do like the white wax and how it does brighten things up and the weathered look that it gives. So it's just kind of a different way to distress things or give things a little bit of an embellished look rather than using the typical brown antiquing wax. And you of course can go as heavy or as light as you want on this. So again, just a matter of personal preference, but I really do love the look that it gets. But I just make sure I go over every single edge, do the exact same process, paint it on, and then I just take my paper towel and wipe it off. Now initially I was going to paint this back portion of the sign here so I thought I was going to file it off and then I thought it would be really fun to put some craft paper on there just some scrapbook paper. So I'm just trying a couple of different types here different wood tones you'll have to let me know which one you like the best if you like the direction that I went or if you like some of these others better. But there is this burlap from Dollar Tree and I did have some actual like burlap paper you can see how similar it is it even has like the imperfections that you might find in the typical burlap like that and I really liked the way that this looked and thought that could be a really good like natural look I felt like the beachy theme uh, I just like the natural tones with it you can see here I'm just showing you a sheet of actual burlap like how good it looks compared to this but I really think I'm going to achieve the flattest look with the burlap paper so that's the direction that I went now you guys know this is like my most favorite crafting staple is this purple Elmer school glue. I love this stuff and it works so well, but I do just want to make sure I give a heavy, heavy coat on all of the edges here because I don't want any chance that that paper is going to peel up. So where there's a little bit of unevenness there, I just use my finger to kind of smudge that into all of those little nooks and crannies so you can get the best bond possible. And then once I get over all of the edges, I just make sure that everything is covered the entire 
your surface there with a good liberal amount of this school glue here. You can see I'm even just going around the edges one more time just to make sure that nothing has a chance of coming up. So now I'm just checking my paper to make sure where the top and the bottom is so I make sure that I can get it centered correctly. And then I'm just gonna place that down kind of into the corner I say kind of because I want to leave a little bit of the paper on either side because I want to be able to go in and customize my edge and you'll see what I mean by that here in a moment. So I just wipe any excess glue off there and then the key to this is to use a brayer and you can just get these on Amazon. You can get them at your craft store. It, you typically buy the Mod Podge um, because it is a Mod Podge brand, the one that I have. There's probably other areas you can find them, but that's just where I found this one. And then I'm just going back and forth in all different directions to make sure that there's a really good bond and now I'm just cutting with an, an exacto knife here as close to the edge you could use scissors to cut this off as well um, because I was just trying got this new knife little exacto knife here so I was just trying that here so it took me a few times to kind of get how much pressure I would need but you can see it does do a really good job of getting very close to your item what really gives this that customized look though and make it look like it was actually made to go on this piece is taking your fingernail file and going in a downward motion to tear the paper and then to get all of that excess off you go side to side but you can see you want to do that downward motion never up to peel the paper off of your surface you're going down towards the surface and that way you're going to keep that bond with your glue and then once you get all of those edges kind of torn you go side to side now I'm just using this Gorilla Glue right here. It has a nice little brush on it. I thought this would be the best option to glue this back into our frame here. So I just go around all of the edges with this, giving a liberal coat. So that way I can stick our um, now covered in burlap background back into the frame. So you just make sure that you hold that down and have the proper amount of time to let that super glue cure on there. And then if you need to go around the edge for an additional reinforcement, you can do that. Now I have this Darling Anchor. It came from Dollar Tree. It had a little tassel coming off of one end and some Darling little wooden beads at the top of it. I did take those out so I can use those in another project, but I'm just going to put some hot glue on this and that's how I'm going to glue it to the burlap paper there. I just really think this is coming together and I love how this looks. So now moving on to the second project in this DIY here is I'm taking this thrift store frame. It's a, I call it a frame, but I mean really is a background here, but I just sanded it down to get the wording off because it did say happy holidays on there. And then uh, I am gonna paint over it, I decided. I didn't know if I was gonna leave the wood natural or not, but I felt like where I left the last one natural, I wanted to add some color to this one. And I'm just taking this starfish from Dollar Tree and I removed the twine off of it and I took the staples out of the back. It took me a little bit of time as you can see to get those removed but I wanted to make sure that I had a very smooth surface that I could glue this down and it, man it was giving me a little bit of a hard time and I think it was probably just a me issue not the starfish issue but sometimes you have a little bit of a difficult time getting these things out but I finally did it so I'm taking this is just ocean this is by Waverly's chalk paint I know that folk art makes a color that is very similar in blue so if that's the brand you can find I've started to hear reports of Waverly chalk paint being back in Walmart so I'm gonna have to go check that out if you've seen it comment below and let me know if you've been able to find it or not because I do love the colors that Waverly had but Waverly's chalk paint and folk art chalk paint are the same company just different brands that they make so I feel like the folk art does a really good job if that's all you can find now I'm just using some white wax on this because I wanted it to have a weathered look too and kind of have it look almost like that, like it's been weathered by the ocean and smoothed down there. And so I thought it would be a really nice look. It's kind of a matter of personal preference, but again, I just paint that on and then I just take a paper towel and you, and I wipe it off and you can see how heavy I went with it here. And then I just kept wiping it off until I get the desired look that, that you want and how much coverage that you do want. I did use a little bit of a Q-tip to clean in between the little, uh, uh, grooves there so that way the wax wasn't down in there and it kind of kept that traditional shiplap look. Now I'm just taking this hot glue on the back of the starfish here and then I just decided which was going to be my top which was my side and everything and placed that down. 
and that was easy peasy there and then i do just take my heat gun if there's any glue like hot glue webs the heat gun is a great way to get those to disappear so i just went around all of it to make sure that there was no like hot gun hot gun spidery webs but look at how beautiful both of these pieces look they're both very similar but yet they look very different which one would you prefer to have in your home would you use both of them to decorate i think they both ended up beautiful and they're going to be great to achieve that nautical or beach look I wanted to try this project last year and so I had been saving some different shapes of glass bottles and jars that I found like at Dollar Tree, the thrift store, the craft store, just my stash. And so I, this year I finally, I ran out of time last year and so this year I thought this is the perfect time to try this. So I want to make some sea glass, my own type of sea glass here. And I know they sell spray paints to do this and I'm very curious to try that. But I'm just really trying to use what I have and I've seen this method using Mod Podge and then just some acrylic paint. So I just poured some Mod Podge into a cup here and I just added acrylic paint till I got the desired color that I wanted and I'm doing kind of like a sea foamy green color and then I thought this blue color was really pretty also and I thought they complemented each other really well so those are the colors that I'm going to go with now it's pretty simple you just start by painting this onto your jars you do a really light coat work in light coats I did realize after a little bit that I don't know that I loved the brush that I was using so I switch over to one of those foam brush tools you'll see here in just a moment that I do that and I felt like I got a little bit better coverage less brush strokes in that so it just kind of depends on what you're trying to achieve I, I will be honest that this process I'll show you here in the end they weren't quite as translucent as I was hoping but I really do like the look that they end up giving here but it was just simple all of these different shapes and all of these different um, types of jars it was so fun getting to choose the different paints I was going to put on both of them and you can see I'm still using my brush at this point before I realize I want to switch over to that foam uh, tool but I mean the brush probably once I got done I realized the brush probably would have been fine to keep using that the key is you just want to work in really thin coats not have like it be goopy or anything anywhere and so just getting off that thin that amount of like excess that you might have here's where I decided to switch over to this because I felt like it might work a little bit better and you can kind of see there's a little bit less brush strokes again in the end I don't think it really would have mattered the tool that I use it just when I was doing this I didn't know if the brush strokes were really going to make that big of a difference but I feel like you got them no matter what you used so I'm just going through the different jars here I think I have a total of five jars I do three of them this green color and then I ended up doing two of them the blue color and I give them each a couple of coats I thought this jar with the little teeny dots all over the raised dots on there was so cute uh, and Dollar Tree I know I'm not I don't remember where I got this one but Dollar Tree has a lot of fun different textured jars too that I think would be really really cute to do this with and and I don't these are all clear but I got wondering and I'll have to try it is if sometimes you'll see like the colored glass at Dollar Tree that's already like a green color or something like that or a yellow that I'm wondering if you were to paint over that how that would look because like I said it didn't end up as translucent as I wanted so I think you'd be okay to use those but I'll have to try that sometime uh, I just went over these two jars with that one with the dots I had to make sure that the paint and the Mod Podge mixture didn't pool around those dots so that is one thing when you're using a texture you do want to be cautious of so again just covering all of the jars I think you guys have seen me paint a time or two so we'll just kind of skip right here and kind of move on to the next part which really the next part is just more painting I think I ended up doing three coats on these but you just I just wanted to show you what that base coat looked like dried there and then moving on to the second coat and here's where I was like you know what I'm just gonna stick with my brush because I liked the coverage that I got with it versus the no brush strokes because I really don't think it's gonna make a big difference in the end so again you're just gonna give them all a second coat and then assess them and determine whether you want to do a third coat in case I forgot to mention earlier, the type of Mod Podge that you want to use is a matte Mod Podge. I feel like that's going to give you the best look for your sea glass. So when you're getting your Mod Podge, just make sure that you have the matte, bare minimum satin, I guess, but I would stick with matte if I were you. Look at how beautiful these all turn out. I feel like they did turn out really good in the end. There was a few moments during this project I was like, Ugh, I don't know how this is gonna look, but I feel like this really is going to be a compliment to any type of nautical or beach or just a fresh feel that you want in your decor for summertime or any time of year that you use beachy decor what do you guys think of this sea glass do you like this is this something that you would try I had a lot of fun making it and I really do think they turned out really beautiful
Thank you so much for joining me today. It was so much fun looking back in my stash and seeing what items I had left to make some beautiful nautical themed DIYs with. I hope that you guys enjoyed watching the process on these and you feel that they all turned out so beautiful. Did you have a favorite? Is there a technique that you would like to try? I love how they all turned out and I feel like they're all going to be a great addition to that beachy look that I'm going for. I feel like they're going to be a good complement to anybody's decor that they have for summertime. So definitely let me know my your favorite. I also want to say thank you so much to Liana for hosting this playlist. Remember to click that link down in my description box or pinned in my comments to watch the playlist of these other beautifully talented ladies and their creations that they have come up with. Thank you so much for watching today, you guys. I'll see you next time. Happy crafting. If you like the video that you just saw and you want to keep crafting together, here's another video that you might enjoy. And as always, remember to like and subscribe. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.